Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Comic Book Burrito. And truth, justice, and a better tomorrow? <laughs> well, truth, justice, and the Comic Book Burrito. My name's Darian. My name's Landon. And today we have a plethora of stuff for you. We got Marvel, we got DC, we got games, you name it. We got it. Let's talk. Landon, how you been doing? Well, well, first off, I want to say we, we do also, not support, we, we don't support that new Superman thing. <laughs> we like to just in an American way, but you know, whatever. Yeah. And also um, we don't just have those things I talked about that we're gonna that we are gonna talk about. We also have NFTs. <laughs> and you can get those at twitch.com. Um well, I mean, hey, you name it, you got it. No. <laughs> you, you, you um, NFTs or this is an episode for you. Never. But anyway, um, how you been? Very uh very interesting day for me today. Uh, mm-hmm. well, tomorrow's my birthday as we are recording this. Happy birthday, Landon! Everybody, um, scream it through you. your TVs and your phones and your computers, phones, your computers. Whatever. Um, yes, I'm turning 18 uh, tomorrow. Um, but uh, I did get something very interesting today. Uh, I got a tattoo <laughs> of uh, Spider Man. So that was, uh, that was a birthday present from my uh, stepdad. Shout out to Will Queen Tattoos. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I did today. I uh, got up, went to the thing, got done. I'll say it took around maybe two hours, nice. if not three. And, um, yeah, it looks good. I'll have a picture posted in, in our, um, Twitter, Facebook, and, uh, Instagram uh, or my Instagram. Nice. If you can see it. Nice. Uh, what, what about you though? What about you? Um, really all I've done is I've read comics. I read. I finished that Loki book, and I'm going to be doing a review on that in a separate video by myself on the YouTube channel. Um, uh, I read that and some comics. Uh, been playing a lot of games. Uh, I don't know. That's pretty much all I've done. I, I watched. I, you know, I watched um, an episode of a DC show that we'll talk about later. You know, Peacemaker. Oh, Peacemaker. Oh, yeah, I did watch Peacemaker. It was it was another filler episode, but it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I watched Book of Boba Fett. I'll talk about that um, another time. I heard Luke Skywalker is supposed to be showing up next week. Just wanted to put that out there. But, um, yeah, it's pretty much all. Um, not much interesting going on. Uh, we don't have anything to review at the start of this episode. So we should just get right into the news. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I sat down for 30 painstaking minutes. And I wrote down the news. Uh-huh. Well, I'm gonna, sorry. that's the job. And I'm going to bring you the news right now. Sony is reportedly planning to begin production on its Madam Web movie this year. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I have almost absolutely no idea who Madam Web is. Okay. So, so I'm gonna, have you, have you, well, you want me to explain it? Or? Yeah, so you explain it, and then I'm going to look up some stuff. Well, yeah, do look it up, because I feel like I might be wrong. Um, um, well, first off, I have a question. Have you ever played the game Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions? No. Okay. Well, um, basically, Madam Web is a interdimensional being mean, where she can like look across different universes is in a way of like different Spider-Man and you know a couple of spider it, it says she's got gifted intellect, telepathy, clairvoyance, and pre precognition. Yes, yes, she is um she I believe she is blind. And and she uh and she she kind of helps God's Peter, especially if it's something that could like destroy multiversal things, kinda. So, okay. Kinda and um or someone who who can control multiple universes, kind of. So she seems so. very interesting of a character, like very. Yes, yeah. she was. I don't remember what her first appearance was, but I know she was in a couple. Her of first appearance of was uh, the Amazing Spider-Man number two hundred and ten in November of nineteen eighty. Okay, so yeah, she has been around for a while. Uh, I know. I, I know she ain't a character that just shows up in like every she, issue, um, but. Um, she helped defeat the X Men in some kind of. She almost nearly died after Juggernaut separated her from her life support system. Yeah, her life support system is like this big web of uh, it's like this big web. I I don't know if it looks differently or anything else, mm-hmm. but um, 
I know in the Sar- Spider-Man Sarah Spider- Dimensions game, he, he's in, like, you know how, like, web, a web looks and, like, a space between the webs and all that? Yeah. In that game, it has, like, a picture of, like, a different Spider-Man. Like, it has, also, like, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Ham and all that. <laughs> and that, and I'm, I'm believing that's what her uh, life support is. Huh. Um... They announced in 20, September 2019 that the solo film was being made by, with Burke Sharpless and Matt Sazama writing the film. It'll be a part of Sony's Spider-Man universe, so most likely, um, you know, it connected with the Craven and the uh, Venom and uh, Morbius. your Morbius yeah, movie. Yeah, that comes out. I was going to say it comes out this month, but no, it doesn't. No, Month's it doesn't. almost over, and it comes out April first, and then April first going to come. Yeah. April Fools, and they're going to be like, "Oh, comes out in May." Like, oh. Dude, you know, I think that movie would have been out by now. I just realized it, it was supposed to come out like January twenty eighth. Yeah, eighteenth, uh, I think. I thought. It was supposed to come out yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, <Man>. <laughs> or <laughs> whatever. Just... Yeah, yesterday. You're right. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I'm okay. So I'm interested. I'd watch it. Well, I'm just nervous of like, what could they do? You know what I'm saying? But because I think a Venom, Venom could work because it's Venom. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yes. Uh, like, M- Morbius is getting his own movie. I feel like Madam Web, a Madam Web movie, would be cool. So how, see how she became Madam Web. I, I'm guessing that's what it would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't think of. A, and we're getting else. all. We're getting this multiverse, you could say, of different Spider-Man characters that are eventually going to cross over into the MCU. Yeah. Um, well, I know there was, I don't know if it says anything about that, but I know there were talks of doing a Silver Sable and Black Cat movie team up, team up movie. Yeah, I'd heard about that. So I'm out of it something there. Um, I mean, I, I know I kind of, I know when you first said this, I kind of just kind of scoffed a bit. But it's just more like I don't know. I, like it's more like a why, and then like a oh they're doing this character. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, but we'll 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 see. We'll see. Like to me, doing a Madam Web movie is like doing a uh, an Uncle Ben movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if Uncle Ben were a clairvoyant, uh, <laughs> blind. Like don't get me wrong. I'm mean, don't get me wrong. Madam Web has more qualities about her, but like you know, what I'm saying like she shows up and you kind of tell what she's there for. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but hey, maybe we'll get a Madam Web introduction and um, hopefully across the Spider Verse. I think that would be pretty cool. That would pretty be, cool. That would, that would be pretty. And maybe that could get people interested, and then they'd be like, "Oh, cool, Madam Web movie." But who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I'd like that. Mm. Um. All right. Well, what was that? <clears throat> Here we go. Eternals VFX super the Eternals VFX supervisor has confirmed that Dane Whitman's Ebony Blade will appear in Marvel Studios Blade movie. Um. Now this is a given. Uh, Eternals has yeah. been out for a long enough time. Where I can talk about this. Um. Yeah. We see in the after credit scene, you know, that um he's being ready to touch the sword, and it's kind of like moving a little bit. It looks it looked kind of like it was alive. And he was getting ready to touch it, and then you hear Blade go, are you sure you're ready to do that, Mr. Whitman? And um, I guess setting up uh, possibly the Blade movie. And with this information, the Blade itself, the Ebony Blade, will appear in the movie. That does not say Dane Whitman will or not, the Black Knight. I would assume so. But uh, I don't know. I'm really interested to see where they take his character. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh... Because last time we checked on him, he's just like, yeah, I found this, you know, I found a big, you know, history of my family. Mm-hmm. With, he opens up the sword, you know, we hear Blade. So, uh, I'm playing a bit of Lego Marvel 2 recently. And the Black... <laughs> the Black I mean, this go off topic. But no, yeah. the, Black, the Black Knight is in the game. Oh yeah! Apparently, apparently he has like a good story thing in it. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Um, okay, so that Black Knight that's in that is the villain or a villain. That was a villain. Okay, but there's another one. I don't know. I can't remember since the last I played like on Marvel two, but um, I know he's a villain at one point. But Mm -hmm. in in the comics, one of the Black Knights is a villain, and there's another one um, after like that one dies. That's a good guy, which I think is Dane Whitman. Okay, so we're okay. So they're gonna do. 
So this, uh, so yeah, he did say this is his family. So maybe his uh, father or something was a uh, evil. Maybe yeah, to be evil somewhere. one. No, he's like a good one. Oh, okay. Give me a flashback of the evil Black Knight just wrecking people. That would be cool. That would be cool. Many Black Knight. But, um, well, yeah, I'll be. I'm interested in seeing what they do with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, you know, Blade Blades. Um, pre-production right now so yes uh, he'll be out okay. next year year after i assume next year but i don't know they're not filming yet so once they are filming we'll be getting some set photos and i'll be talking about this yeah uh, they're there they're casting still some roles yeah uh all right maybe i can get a roll in there <laughs> we'll see <Yeah. laughs> maybe a vampire um, maybe, yeah. all right toby mcguire was recently in an interview with andrew garfield and tom holland <laughs> to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. And he has opened up about his role in the movie. He says, quote, it was really about getting together with these people and revisiting what was part of my story. He also says, I don't want to say to close the chapter, but revisit and have certain resolutions. Dude, that means he's coming back. <laughs> his story back. is not yet over, ladies and gentlemen. His Peter Parker, Peter number Peter 2 story is not over. Dude, he's Peter 1. We all know. In our minds, he's Peter One. In our mind, I don't know why it wasn't like Peter Andrew, One. Andrew's Peter Three, Andrew which still track, which tracks, but no, we love, we love, no, it tracks no, because Andrew. he's Peter Three in the movie. And no, I'm saying dude. like Tom Holland is second, the second best Peter Parker. No, dude, we're not. Talk, no, we're not even doing that. We're not I am. No, Andrew is Peter Two. To, Tom is Peter. Is it because three. his movies came out at, after Toby? Yeah, so that's yeah, not. That, like, that's that makes better sense. <laughs> that makes a thousand more times more sense than just be like, well, he's the worst Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't like it, but I would never say Andrew's Peter Three. I don't know, dude. He did a pretty good Peter. But no I, I think I could go Peter. In No Way Home, he did good. But then I think back and I'm like, oh, yeah, he made the Amazing Spider-Man movies. And I'm like, everybody. He didn't make them. I didn't make them. Well, 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 you know what I mean. Avia Roth made those movies. <laughs> Mar- Mar- we got to blame Avia Roth for those movies. <laughs> Means I, ain't blaming it. I ain't blaming Mark Webb. But Okay, but the main thing here to talk about is that his story is not yet over. He is not close to the chapter. Coming, totally coming back. Multiverse of Madness. Come on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really believe that's what it is. Yeah, that's all. That, that's what I got for that. I just thought I'd mention it. Um, we got a lot mm. of news here, so we're trying to speed up just a little bit. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, mm. All right, James Gunn. We haven't talked about him having to do with Marvel in quite a while, but James Gunn has confirmed that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three will be the last time we see this team of Guardians. Mm. So. <laughs> He's dying. <laughs> Expect no. This is the last time we see the entire team. So no more Star Lord. No, no more. No, no more. it means no. It means this team. So exactly. It's going to, uh, Unless so Star Lord stays and goes to another team. No. Well, we never. We don't know. I, not all of them are leaving. You never know. This is the last no, Guardians I, movie. We know that. I do. It's not the last. The last, or the last one James Gunn said in his story. It is. <laughs> I honestly think that. Uh, Hmm. Sorry, let me think for a minute. I think we're still going to get the same group of characters, but I think some of them will die. Well, I I think the way he was saying it, I feel like he was meaning like the team in general. This is it because we'll see them in Thor: Love and Thunder this year, and the special, and then this, and that'll be it. That'll be like five. I'll be. That's a lot of movies that they've been. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I know that David Tees is not doing anymore. And yeah. um, everyone's saying that Rocket's going to die. I could see Gamora staying because we just got her back. Um, yeah, I could see Gamora, Star Lord, and Groot. What about Mantis? <laughs> dude, if Mantis, dude, if Mantis dies, and like, she, oh, dude, well, you know, the theater will be silent except for one person on the side going, "Yes." <laughs> I know, dude. Kick that guy out. But do you imagine, like, oh, dude. Oh, d- oh, dude. Okay. Imagine she gets. Imagine she's like dying, right? And like Star Lord's like holding her or whatever, mm-hmm. and she like puts her hand on his like face, and she like like Star. You see Star Lord crying, and then she starts crying and stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> but I don't know. You that emotionally that. connected with Mantis? <laughs> yeah, dude. That would be crazy. It's been two movies. <laughs> two movies. Oh my god! I freaking love Mantis. Oh, oh my god. god. She's 
Uh, but yeah, I can see Rocket Groot possibly. Fan. I think Groot. Um, they've done all they really can with him. He's kind of like they said. There's going to be a new version of him in this. But you've done teenage Groot, adult Groot, baby Groot, and now you got Alpha Groot, whatever that is. James Gunn's doing Alpha Alpha Groot. That's what he called. Oh, it. I wonder if we'll see grown Groot in uh in uh Thor Thor Love and Thunder. True. I, I don't think he's going to be in it. I think only um Star Lord and uh it said Star Lord and Drax are going to be in that. Oh, I okay. Know. I, didn't know, I didn't know Drax. I know Star Wars because uh, uh, possibly Rocket. I could see Rocket do it, being in there. Mm-hmm. But uh, I can, I can yeah. see that as well. Um, it'll be the last time we see that team of Guardians. Um, that's gonna be a sad movie. I'll be crying. And he said yeah. it's gonna be very dark and it's a very emotional story. Not my old boy. I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um. Yeah. But I'll keep you guys updated on all that. Mm-hmm. Now, um, also, it goes without saying, though, this is all ru- – some of this is rumors, some of this is news, some, but take everything with a grain of salt other than stuff that's officially confirmed. Um, mostly because, I mean, you never know. Stuff could change, you know, and um, studio could be like, ah, maybe not do that. We'll switch a story around, and maybe randomly they'll – just completely scrap Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. <laughs> mm, yeah, I swear to God, that would that would suck. You never know. But <clears throat> let's talk about something that is still Marvel related, possibly MCU related, but very much comic book related. So, Marvel has announced this comic series coming out called Judgment Day, and it is bringing together the Avengers, the X Men, and the Eternals coming in summer 2022 um let me look this up just so i can get a good description of it they've put out a few different like pictures of quotes from the comics yeah and let me pull those up right here all right so i'm going to read you all three of them the first one is from tony stark it says speaking broadly i'm pro hubris but how on earth do you think we're going to make a god in a few hours Whatever that means. That's a quote from the comic. Making a god. Who is that? Yes, uh, making a god. Um, next one. There will always be a war. That's the one thing one can always be sure of. Irene Adler is who said that. Which um, un- I don't know. I don't think that's an X Men character. But Irene Adler is the name of the woman from uh, uh, Penny Dreadful. I want to say. Hold on. That okay. sounds about. Hold on, Irene Adler. Irene Adler Marvel. Okay, she is. She's a character called Destiny. She can predict future events. Okay. So, apologies for that. Um, <clears throat> and then the third quote, which is the best one, is by Druig from the Eternals. You know, the guy can control people with his mind. He said, for a million yeah. years, Earth has been protected from the Deviants, but we made a mistake. We missed some. The mutants. Hmm. And the Eternals are going to attack the mutants in this comic book. Now, this sounds like a great okay. comic book. Like, it's a great series. Um, yes. I told Landon we should review this mm. um, on an episode. But <clears throat> mm. we are we are called the comic book breeder. <laughs> That's true. Um, so it says that uh, it's actually it's an X Men Eternal Avengers crossover called Judgment Day. More Avengers and one fewer E in the title. Confirmed by Marvel. Yeah. Whatever that means. Uh, let's see. Um, there In March, Eternals number 10 comes out, which is described as a lead-in to the biggest story of 2022, but also billed as an Eternals versus Avengers storyline. The new mm-hmm. Marvel previews list both Eternals number 10 and X-Men number 9 with banner Judgment Day is coming for both. Mm, okay. Um, it seems like it'll be really good. Uh, Eternals number ten is only three ninety nine. Let me find that. <laughs> three ninety nine. And okay. so is so is the X Men number nine. Three ninety nine. Yeah, we definitely have to check those out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we'll be talking about that now. What I think this has to do with the movies is Eternals have really never interacted with people that much, from what I know. I may be completely wrong about that, but I don't know much about Eternals. I don't think anybody does. Nope. Um, but I, I feel like they, 
Yeah. I feel like they haven't interacted much with um, different characters, especially the X-Men, from what I know. Uh, this seems like we know we already have Eternals and Avengers in the MCU, and we're getting X-Men. This feels like this could perhaps be turned over to the movie side yeah. of things. Um, and hey, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. But Marvel has yeah, declared I'll- that the mutants are deviants, according to Eternals, which is interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. I mean, that could be a way to bring them in in the MCU. I still feel like the snaps, because there are three snaps. That's not a lot of radiation and like cosmic energy out there. So that yeah. that awakened something. Yeah, I am. Um, or Wanda becoming the Scarlet Witch maybe awakened something. I don't know. That's why I like to think more of, but who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But that is the Judgment Day comic book event that is happening this summer. Mm-hmm. Judgment Day is coming. All right. Here we go. Get some She-Hulk news. Tim Roth has confirmed that Abomination's human form will appear in the Disney Plus show. Yeah. So, did he turn back to a human in... I've never seen Incredible Hulk. I saw the first 15 minutes and was over it. The um, first 15 minutes of Incredible Hulk? Okay. Yeah. Uh, did he ever turn back to a human after he turned to Abomination? No, you don't You don't see him. You just see Hulk... Uh, kind of like choke him out with a chain real quick to get him knocked out. And then he just lays on the ground and that's it. You never see him turn back into a human. Okay, and we saw in Shang-Chi he was still a monster. So this will be the first time we see him in human form since the beginning of that movie. Yeah. Huh. He's going to look different. That's for dang sure. Yeah. I'm very interested um, to see this. Show. Like again, this show seems like it's going to be like a, not a sitcom, but like a legal, it's a legal comedy. So it's going to be like a lawyer show. Yeah. Like a cop show maybe. Mm-hmm. Which I'm interested in. I like them going off on these different directions and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah but I thought I, I'm I mentioned that. That's probably the most excited. I mean, I'm excited for Moon Knight. I'm, I'm excited. For, hey, watch it. Look at all these set photos, even though they're nothing interesting. I'm kind of. I'm really excited for Secret Invasion. I'm. I don't think it's gonna be bad, and I'm excited for it. But I just want to see more. I just want to see it, even because I'm. Oh probably, yeah. But come on, it's Nick I'm Fury. Sure. It's a Nick Fury show. No, no, I love. I freaking love Samuel L. Jackson. I'm just, I, I'm not a big fan of the scrolls in the MCU. So having a whole show like dedicated to that, that, I'm getting you, kinda, Is I'm, it that, or is really, you just didn't like Captain Marvel? <laughs> I, I don't like Captain Marvel, but I didn't really care for the scrolls either. <laughs> scrolls were somewhat part of it, honestly. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too thrilled. But if I, I'm sure if I see a trailer, I'll go crazy for it. But I am, I am happy to see a lot of Nick Fury. It looks like Maria Hill is going to be in it as well. Um, yeah, okay. She was in set photos. And Amelia Clark, who plays... Uh, oh, man, who she plays? She plays the blonde girl in Game of Thrones. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what's her name? She's like a main character almost, but not really. Um, who does she play? Yeah, I'm not sure. uh, she plays. Oh, <laughs> I got to pronounce this. Uh, Dana- Dana- Daenerys. <laughs> Daenerys Targaryen. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you people, everyone knows what I'm talking about. She also played um, the girl that Han Solo was into in Solo: A Star Wars Story. Um, there's all that movie. You know, but, uh... it's a good, pretty good movie. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Paul Bettany's in it, plays the villain at the end of it. In what? In Solo Star Wars Story. Oh, does it really? Yeah, and then Darth Maul shows up for like once. Yeah, that, I, yeah, I, saw, I kept seeing that. Thing with his robot legs. <laughs> with his robot legs. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, but yeah, Amelia Clark was in some of them. She's playing a new character. Um, I'm not sure who. We don't know who the villain is yet. We know the scrolls are going to be, but I'm pretty sure there's a leader of them. And obviously, you got Ben Mendelsohn as Talos, the scroll. Um, he was in human form in the set photos that we saw when they were recording. Since not didn't have any like makeup or anything. There's special effects. Yeah. Um, not special effects. I could say like prosthetics. Yeah. All right. Uh, but moving on away from that Disney Plus on some Spider Man again, real quick. Just uh, let you know, Spider Man's No Way Home's Blu-ray will include around 100 minutes of bonus content. 
Um, now that does not that could be deleted scenes. It could be behind the scenes stuff. It could be cast interviews. It could be bloopers. It could be is it extended stuff? Like what is what is it? Possibly is it- deleted scenes would be the extended stuff. They won't. It's not going to be added to the movie. It's just going to be oh, on the disc. It's going to be like another thing you can look at, like a separate, okay. like extras section. So, so like all the bonus features. Yeah, that's what it is. Bonus. Okay. Cut. I'm I'm hoping not I'm, hun- I'm, it would not be a hundred minutes because I would make it a three and a half hours by movie. <laughs> uh, uh, is that a problem? I mean, no. <laughs> um, I'm hoping. Okay, well, what's the one thing you're looking forward to the Blu-ray? I'm gonna buy the 4K. Um, just rewatching it again. <laughs> just, well, okay. Well, besides that, like, like, like what's the bonus feature you want to see? I want to see uh, behind the scenes of the all the fights between uh, Green Goblin and Spider. Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah, especially like that one scene where it's yeah. like the host. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me, uh, I, I'm hoping, I'm begging. There's like a commentary with uh, to- Toby, Tom, and Andrew. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping that's in there. I would like one. Uh, I would like three of them. One with like the you know director. Uh, you know, t- uh, John Watts, Tom Zendaya, and Jacob. Mm-hmm. Jacob, you know, and Benedict. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, and Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. And then, and then the other one is all like the villains, like Willem Dafoe. I'd like, uh, I'd like, well, we already got something like that though, with that one, uh, interview. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but imagine that, but they're talking like throughout the entire movie, saying, like, oh, yeah, and Thomas Hayden one. Church will not be there because he did not film the movie. <laughs> Well, he he was in the movie, but just, he provided just a voice, and that was it. He sent that from I'm his home, home, probably his underwear on his couch. <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, you, no, that was him. Do you <laughs> see the concept art for him? Um, I think I did. He, he had kind of like a Marty McFly jacket on, but it was like green. Huh. I, I thought it looked kind of cool. He was wearing like a brown shirt and like a green uh. Marty we, McFly jacket. Well, we didn't like, get like, that. Like, like, little puffy. Jacket. I know we got full. We got Pierce saying that guy was a little annoyed. But yeah, but um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I thought I'd, I'd be interested in that. Um, next piece of news is something that I'd be. I'm interested in. I'd watch it, but I know Landon does not like the idea oh, is, is of this. This. Is this. Is this the one? You told yes, me this is the piece of news that Landon will not enjoy. This is a rumor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That Marvel Studios may be developing, according to some leaks and insiders, maybe developing a Mighty Thor project starring Natalie Portman. Now, this could be a show, and if it's a show, I think it's great because Thor needs to stay in the movies. He needs to have his own movies and not just make another set of Thor movies with a different Thor. Make it a show about her. And I'd be interested. You can bring back um, different characters. Um, gr- oh, she could team up with um, Falcon, Captain America, because in the comics, they have sort of a relationship going on. Okay. H- here's my issue. And you just don't like Natalie Portman's character. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Jane Foster. <laughs> I hate well, now her. she's I the don't... mighty Thor. So maybe oh, she'll be different. Wow. Oh, okay. And directed by Taika really... Waititi, could be. Better. Well, yeah, you know what? I will. Uh, I will give it the benefit of doubt because the thing is, I'm not, I'm not mad that you know she's going to do like a Thor kind of, uh, not persona, but a uh, like kind of like a uh, legacy type of deal. Yeah, I'm not mad. About it. I just I don't like Jane Foster's character in those movies, but I. Yeah, you did actually just brought up a good point that did made me kind of think, rethink it a bit. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen Taka uh, Watiti do Jane Foster yet. Yeah, we haven't seen how, but hopefully they'll change it up. Where I'm all like, okay, okay, she's gonna be kind of cool. And she's gonna have the reforged Mjolnir, which I think is great. I mean, Thor's got Stormbreaker, and I like Stormbreaker, even though Mjolnir is like the classic. And I like, I'm yeah. used to Stormbreaker now. I like Storm, Stormbreaker is more ultimate comics type type of deal. Yeah, and I'm into the, I'm into the way um, Stormbreaker looks, especially with the way Thor looks now. Yeah, not the, not the fat yeah. Thor because he's not gonna be fat anymore. We better have yeah. a workout montage. 
that would be kind of cool. You know what it needs to be? He's, he meets the Guardians, right? And um, Thor's still fat in the beginning of the movie. He meets the Guardians. Star-Lord, they already called him fat in Infinity War in the yeah. scene. Him and Drax forces both of them to work out. <laughs> like forces would, Quill to like work out with Thor. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, but I need an eighties workout montage. Yeah, dude, like they freaking play like um, they play something off the. I need uh, we, I need a hero. They do. Uh, they play some, they need to play some off the Zoom uh, that Yondu got for. Peter. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Now, oh yeah, um, Sean Gunn too. We got to remember as part of the Guardians now. His character of um, yeah, he does the he controls the arrow now. So yeah, what's his name? Oh, I'm gonna look it up because I'm gonna drive me crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember now. Um, we only seen him a few times. Sean Gunn's character, Guardians of Galaxy. Um, he plays Craglin. That's what it is. Craglin. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. He's he's gonna be in Thor: Love and Thunder. Is uh no, no, I'm not gonna ask that because that's like that would make no sense. I'm okay. Um, but man, I we get Thor in July. We do, don't we? Yeah. Yes. And we're going to see the Guardians twice this year. Yeah, that's going to be, be great. Do, do, um, oh, uh, what am I saying? Wasn't there rumors that we were going to get a Thor trailer this Super Bowl? Yes. Oh, or a Doctor Strange one? Um, there's a Doctor Strange t- uh, TV spot coming during that, but we're getting a Thor trailer. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, oh, Okay. Okay. That's gonna be cool. That's gonna be cool. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I just realized though. What? I kind of just came to this conclusion. I wonder if they're gonna change the end credit scene for a uh, Spider Man on the Blu-ray. I doubt it. They've done a trailer really? before for another movie, and um, the after credit scene for Captain America the, the last one for Captain America the First Avenger was uh, the trailer for Avengers, right? It wasn't the trailer. It was like a clip from really? the movie. No, well, not that. I'm talking. Um, maybe then it wasn't Captain America. There was a movie where the Avengers trailer played as an after credit scene. Well, well, it, it, well. I mean, Captain America was the movie that came out right before Avengers. Maybe it was that. One. Not like the first after credit scene was the one where Nick Fury came up to him and was like um, showing him stuff at the Tesseract and all that. That was the clip. Uh, but it was the one after that. There's an after credit scene after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and a, that was. It's a clip. It's a clip from Avengers. It's it's the part where Cap is like boxing or whatever. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, yeah. It yeah I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the second one. There was like a second after credit scene. I remember watching it. No, so I remember seeing it. And I was like, "This is just a trick." No, the first one is. Hang on. No, wait. Crap. Is that from Thor? Let me look. Avengers. I'm about, say, I'm about to say no. I was about to say no because the after credit scene is Nick Fury showing Coulson the test right, and it shows Loki. That's in. Uh-huh. That's, that's, that's it. That's the after credit scene of. Uh, oh, what is that? That's Thor. I'm pretty sure that was Thor because yeah, because uh, Selvig. Because Big Loki's dead. I'm telling you, the after credit scene for. Yeah. Look. Look. Okay. Um. Well, maybe this might be it. I might be wrong. So prove it right, right here. Time Magazine posted this article talking about all the after credit scenes. Um, Iron Man is not literally, one is literally it's a clip from the Avengers movie. Okay, Thor's after credit scene we just talked about was uh, the one with Loki controlling what's his name? All right, Captain oh. America the First Avenger. Um, here we go. Uh, okay, so yeah, he approaches him to save the world. Okay, what am I? Okay, what am I? I don't know what I watched. <laughs> He came back no. in a cut down scene from Avengers. Nick Fury gives Steve Rogers an assignment with worldwide ramifications. Yeah, it's a it's a clip from Avengers. Yeah. What did I, I? Okay, so I saw something. I must have watched it like on my Fire Stick, and it was someone like put that at the end. There was a trailer for the first Avengers movie at the end of the movie that I watched, and that's what I well, thought was the after credit scene for years. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not because um because Captain America came out right before Avengers. Avengers. Then it was, it was like it was so all in order. It was Iron Man, uh, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man Two, Thor, and then Cat. Mm-hmm. So, so clearly, clearly, someone messed up. Someone yeah. in. Yeah, I think so. so I'm uploading our uh, pre- this week's extra beef as we speak. So 
Um, but we got the next piece of news here. Um, I got to look at the screenshot for this one. We got a plot synopsis, ladies and gentlemen, for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, and I'm going to read you this plot synopsis because why else would I tell you about it? All right. <clears throat> In Marvel Studios, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the MCU unlocks the multiverse and pushes its boundaries further than ever before. Journey into the unknown with Doctor Strange, who, with help of mystical allies both old and new, traverses the mind-bending and dangerous alternate realities of the multiverse to confront a mysterious new adversary. A mysterious new adversary. Mysterious new adversary. Wanda is not a mysterious new adversary. She's well, she would at least be a new adversary, but she's not mysterious. Mm. Uh, yeah. So who is attacking him? Oh, multiverse related. Who would it be? That's what you gotta think. Um, <laughs> who would it be? I I'm thinking. My first thought, I was like, Kang. Me, but <laughs> yeah, obviously, I, mean, I, I came to my mind as well. But I don't know how that would work <laughs> you don't know it wouldn't be shuba that's not that's too that's too small of a villain i feel like to be the main mm. villain yeah uh, i mean it could be though all right what would you're you're better what would sam raimi do what would sam raimi do well i mean whoo, what would sam raimi do uh well I don't know. You can't really predict what a god could do, can you, Darren? <laughs> <laughs> God's working miracles. Um, well, Shima Gorath is dead. I would say Shima Gorath is like the medium villain. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, we saw evil Doctor Strange in there, so... That's true. That could be it. So... Holy crap, dude. I'm like thinking about that trailer and like what he says. This thing's just got a whole lot. Thanks, just trip. got like, out. No, he says thanks, just got thanks out. Got hand. Dude, Sam Raimi still has it, man. He still has it. <laughs> and freaking rumor, freaking Toby McGuire is supposed to show up. Like, dude, get out of here. Dude, I would cry if Toby says so. Cry what, spot, what if there's a whole thing going on? All these multiverse characters are fighting. Um, and then we hear some like cartoony like fun music and a spider ham walks out animated and like beats the crap out of somebody just like he did in, in, into the spider verse <laughs> oh like pulls out like a hammer and stuff yes what if he just starts like what if it's just like the entire mood of the movie changes and spider ham walks out just, i wouldn't like i wouldn't like that i would like them to do it like uh i like how they did howard the duck well like in his world he's animated right but when it comes to like live action, they do a whole lot of they do like a, how Howard the Duck looks like in the in that is movie in the MCU. Uh, Where yeah. it's like he's like it's like a really not real. I don't know how to describe it. So you want it to be like a realistic spider pig? <laughs> well, well, I was thinking of like with how a pig looks. I'm like that looks gross. I don't want that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I really don't know how. I would. All right, we're spending a lot of time on this. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, that's the plot synopsis. I'm really interested. Obviously, we gotta wait till May. May the sixth. I'm, I'm, I'm so mad. I wanted to. Wa- I wanted to watch this in March. Man, oh, wow. but we got the. Well, we got the Batman and the Moon Knight. Oh yeah, and then in May fourth, two days before um, Doctor Strange, we get Obi Wan. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, that's something I'm not, to look forward to. I'm not in a Star Wars movie. But it's Obi Wan, though. It is Obi Wan. <laughs> you get Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader coming back? Yeah, that's very surprised. Um, and he's supposed to be in the Soka show, too, as Darth Vader. Yeah. That's um, really cool. Yeah. Anyway, next. Josh Brolin will be returning to the MCU to reprise two of his roles as Thanos and Cable. Um, Thanos. Don't expect him to be resurrected, but expect a um, flashback. A flashback in anything, possibly Guardians Three, um, or Eter- Eternals Two. Mm. I see that. Well, well, why do, well, okay, I understand why you can maybe some, say something about Eternals, but why? Uh, what was the what was the other one you said before? Guardians Three. Yeah. Why, why do you say Guardians Three? Um, because you got Gamora just came from this new, you know, like old universe. Her dad, um, she was still working with him whenever she came back, and that's she's right, kind of that's right. Okay, so she's probably gonna 
Is she gonna like tell you a story or something? Yeah, Arthur think back to her dad, miss her dad, maybe. Okay. Um Okay, that makes sense. I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, and I'll take Cable. Cable could be in Deadpool three. Yeah, that, I'm. I'm hyped about that. <laughs> I am hyped. I freaking love. I'm waiting for him, dude. I'm waiting for that freaking Deadpool announcement, man. I don't know what's going on with that. You know what's happening. They're you know going. what's happening. I just want to see like a, a title come up. You know what I'm saying? But hey, D23 is this year, so yeah, we're gonna be getting a lot then. I'm praying. I'm praying. Right when now, was D20? When's it? When is it? It's later on. It's like November, right? I don't remember. I know they just sold tickets just recently. Let me look it up because this is important news. Oh, I, 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 I actually thought about getting tickets for both of us, honestly. Then we travel to California. <laughs> I thought about Maybe it. Maybe going to California is too far away. <laughs> September 9th through 11th. So we got a while. We got a while. Yeah. Um, it celebrates its 100th anniversary, the Walt Disney Company. Ew. It, it celebrates its 100th anniversary in 2023. But this is celebrating that as well. All right. Um, skipping on past Josh Brolin. Miles Morales is supposed to be introduced in Spider-Man 4. Um, this huge rumor came out just the other uh, day, and everyone's been talking about it, and new information has come out. Um, he is apparently not going to suit up in the movie. He will be introduced as... Peter Parker's lost now, basically, is nobody. And he's going to yeah. meet Miles, and that he's going to be his new friend, like his new Ned, basically. New um, Ned. Yeah. And he's going to be with Peter throughout the movie, and uh, they're going to get closer as it goes on and bond. But he will not be suiting up, apparently. Well, yeah. I, I think that would be stupid if he suited up and playing his first. first he needs to get bit by a spider in all the movies. And we actually yeah, get to see probably, that. They'll probably, the probably, probably do like the PS4 game. Yeah, where uh, you get introduced. I hope he doesn't get by, a bit by a spider. Uh, Peter, things have been uh, changing. <laughs> like, oh, well, you see, when you get a certain age. <laughs> yeah, I forget. Uh, <laughs> can, we play, can we please get a gameplay trailer for that game already? Holy crap. Uh, I am so uh, hyped. But I'm, I'm hoping, trying, I'm, I would like him to get bit in a second movie, in like the fifth movie. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, um, so I'm trying. I was trying to speed through some of this news because I want to talk about Peacemaker, but uh-huh. we have a few pieces left. These are, these are good ones too. Uh, all right, this got me so excited. John Bernthal is returning as Frank Castle in the MCU. Oh, yeah. Are you serious? I did not hear about this. It got reported by some a new leaker who um, has been credible so far. Some of the stuff they said have come true. Uh, My time to shine. H, I think okay. is their name. Uh, okay. They are, uh, plus Daniel RPK talked about it, and uh, there is a thing I follow on Twitter. We follow on Twitter. Yes. Uh, binge, binge watch this, or I think is their name. Uh, do you remember? I, I can't. I, I, yeah, it doesn't ring a bell currently. Uh, I got the screenshot right here. I'll look at it. Now, binge watch this. They post um, stuff most of the time when it's true, and Everyone's talking about he's now set to return as Punisher, which would make sense. Uh, Daredevil is in it. Man, yeah, well, I was wondering, because I, I had a feeling, I'm like, man, I wonder if they're only going to do Charlie Cox and visit Benafrio, and everyone else is kind of like rebooting a bit. But no, if he's coming back, man, I mean, they could probably get Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and just. Uh, no, no, don't get no, so far with Iron Fist, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, like the, I think the guy they got could have done a really good job, but the script they had, the story sucks. Mm. Mm, I don't know. No. Well, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I like the guy kind of looked the part, honestly, but um, okay. I didn't. I just didn't like the show. Um, oh yeah, I, uh, yeah, I didn't like it either. But you're uh, you're very much right. I'm. I personally absolutely loved John Bernthal's Punisher, and um, yeah. as I'm watching Daredevil and seeing him, he saw him in it. Um, it was it was just great because I'd already watched this show, and I know that takes place before it. Um, yeah, just make me want to go back and watch it. And John Bernthal is already a good actor. Like, yeah. He says he says yeah a lot. <laughs> yeah, just like in the middle of a sentence. How do you see? Do you remember that? Like he would just talk, and then he'll be like saying some story, and he'll go, yeah, and, like in the middle of the, like, <laughs> like he's agreeing with himself, like trying to remember. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. But with some good right, we already got the Punisher writer coming in to do um, Echo and the Daredevil writer. 
So mm-hmm. just, I mean, get him to write a Punisher movie. It'll be a movie. And they're not going to do another show for Punisher. I guarantee it'll be a movie. Yeah, I... I, awesome. would, you know, I would... I would like a good Punisher movie. I, 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 can, go, I can go for one of those. Yeah. I can I, go, I can make make it like a war movie. I want, to see his, I want to see his time in the war, like flashbacks. Mm-hmm. And then um, see like... Uh, maybe do we see his family die at the beginning, or do, we, do they kill his family in this? Do you think well, I mean, you, something else? Do you think they're going to be the same actor, but they're going to kind of like reset the character a bit? I feel like that's what the I don't know. Well, I don't, that's because I mean, they, I feel like that's what they're kind of doing with Daredevil a bit. And uh, well we, well, we don't really know though. We've only seen. We do know that he's supposed to appear in She Hulk with that yellow and red suit. So it could be doing that. It could be yeah. just, just taking the same actors. Yeah. yeah. But according well, to Vincent okay. D'Onofrio, his kingpin's the same one from the show. Same one from the. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll take it. We'll, take, we'll just take his word for it. We'll take yeah. his word for it. Uh, right. But I mean, give me all of John Bernthal Punishers, man. I'll take all that. Uh, yeah. All right. Avengers: Secret Wars is supposedly the next Avengers movie. Is but it now, next Avengers movie? Oh my god! Oh, oh man. <laughs> I'm saying we're so dry with news for that game. I just, <laughs> hey, Avengers Secret. I'm like, no, what? No, man. Okay. Okay. We'll Aven- Avengers Secret Wars is is more than likely, according to everything that we've heard, the next Avengers story. Another interest in the multiverse. They can do that. Um, but decisions are heating up. Apparently, um, the Russos will not comment if they are in talks with Marvel or not. And early drafts of The Secret Wars have the story coming as a trilogy with movies being filmed back to back. So like one every year, I would guess. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, a Avengers trilogy? A story? I, yeah, it'll be the first we got. I mean, we have a, 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 a Avengers... Uh, we have the Infinity War and Endgame, but that's like... Yeah, that's a two-parter. Yeah, I'll take a three-parter. Yeah, I was call it, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when it was supposed to be yeah, Infinity War Part 1 and 2? I will take a hexology of Avengers movies. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember six. when Infinity oh, War was supposed to be Infinity War Part One and then Part Two? Yes, I remember. I remember the. Mm-hmm. I remember that was right I when remember, I started getting into the movies. When I, heard yeah, I remember. I remember the teaser for. Uh, if any were part one, part I do two. remember watching that. Even though I wasn't really, in, I was a, I was a casual fan of the movies then, but then I became a yeah. hardcore fan once I watched them all. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I remember like somebody filming on their phone, and it was like so crappy. Like Spider-Man: The, the Way Home Trail. So god, oh yeah, I, I'd say it was probably like worse than that because like at least you can kind of tell what was going on. This it was like the audio was so awful. <laughs> it, it was it was insane. That's pain. Yeah, but I, I, man, Secret Wars, um, there's been a few of them in comic history. Uh, one of them, uh, Dr. Doom was the villain. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't think they'll take Spider-Man, that one. Spider-Man gets the black suit in uh, Secret yeah, Wars. That's true. That we could, hey, we could see that. Yeah. We could um, see that. I, I, heard, I remember hearing a rumor that Toby and Andrew were apparently supposed to show up in it. I'd, I'd like that. Um, obviously, we're going to have the Fantastic Four. I think this will be. Fantastic Four and this will probably come out the same year. I can feel like that would be a yeah. thing. Or like maybe Fantastic Four before, because they're already working on that. But mm. hey, I, we haven't had an Avengers. It's all been building up to an Avengers movie. Obviously, we're going to have the Shang-Chi in there. I would think, um, you know, I would definitely think Shang-Chi and um, may, the Eternals, may, maybe a few of them uh, show up. Yeah, they seem very OP. Yeah, but but, I, but then like again, though they they seem OP, but they don't. Like I feel like they could be beaten. Yeah, I mean they can. I mean as we can see, they can die normally. Yeah, pretty much. So they're not like and get pushed off a cliff and eat by wolves. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I mean, I think the reason why they live so long is because they're immortal. They're, well, they're they're but, immortal, but they're not. But like they, they've always they've always really stuck together. Yeah, and they're not invincible. They're just immortal. Like yes. a vampire is immortal, but you can stake them through the heart and kill them. And yeah, they die. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I guess I keep I keep having this vision of my dude, but freaking Eternals are OP, man. I can't see. Die. The more I think about it, the more we saw like, like six down the movie. Yeah, I've the more I think about Eternals, the movie itself, 
I'm at a point where I can't like it less than I already do. Like, yeah. I mean, I can, but I, I just, there's nothing else bad about it that makes me like it less. But um, the more I think about it, the more interested I am in these characters. Not like, just like what they could do with them. Yeah. Like, I'm I mean, sitting here like coming up with these things like, oh, if Icarus comes back, they have this whole plot. Where, like, Icarus is back, but he's just like completely like evil, going evil Superman, basically. And they have to like, not fight him in an Eternals movie, but make, maybe Avengers have to take him on at one point. Something like that. Yeah. That'd be that'd be interesting. See um, Thor Thor fight Icarus. That would be freaking cool. That I would, would like a, to see it. That would Thor be cool. Fight <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. I hate like because Icarus was actually my favorite. Yeah, but we we've heard he's coming back. He's supposed to I heard a rumor he was coming back in multiverse of madness, but we don't know if that's true or not. I wonder how normal that would even work, but yeah, was, you know, maybe we'll it's see. a variant. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Alex. He has the long blonde hair and the <laughs> dude. That'd be cool if he had like he was rocking his really classic outfit. That'd, that'd, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, I just want to see like all to the see Eternals see. rocking their classic <laughs> outfits because they would look dude, so awful. Dude, Kinga's outfit, oh bro. <laughs> I would, dude. I would lose it. I would lose it. That's hilarious. All right, um, but let's move on. I got some more multiverse madness info. Uh, this is a pretty good one. So Tom Cruise is more than likely showing up as a va- variant of Iron Man. And we just got some info about that. Let me get it. Where's that? There it is. All right. And I've seen a bunch of people reporting this, so I'm going to assume it's probably true, but maybe not. Probably true. Iron Man, Tom Cruise's Iron Man, is said to be the most powerful Iron Man we've seen yet. Um we do know that he's being playing the superior Iron Man. Yes. So I freaking uh, love it. <laughs> love it. He has possession of three infinity stones, advanced armor, which would be the superior suit, and keeps the head of Thanos preserved in a jar of liquid. What the heck? <laughs> yes, <please>. oh <laughs> that would yeah, be yeah. that would be the Iron Man that won in uh in game or won maybe won in Infinity War. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll get Wakanda in tech to make a suit. That, that 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 sounds like really cool. I remember reading that and I was like, dude, yes. <laughs> Let me see them yeah. putting fanny stones on them. Maybe that's why Josh <laughs> Rowland's coming back. It's just his head in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, yeah. It just they just got they just motion captured them or something. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's just motion captured. Dude, what if the head was like, dude? What if you like kept the head alive? Kind of like Ant Man from when Vision did in What If. <laughs> Yeah, dude, dude, exactly. Oh, dude, I don't know. I think dude, that might be possible. Maybe. I don't know. I'm really interested, though, and hey, I'll take a variant Iron Man any day. We also know we're getting a uh, MCU Reed Richards is, um, according to Daniel RPK, which is a very reliable leaker, um, that we're getting him as the actual MCU. Uh, John Krasinski is the actual MCU Fantastic Four. Um, Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic Honestly, um, I, won't, I won't believe it till I see it. It just sounds too good. But I do believe he agreed to make a cameo in Multiverse of Madness because he said he wanted to do it. His wife didn't want to play him as Fantastic. But he can be like, well, I'm playing Mr. Fantastic. I'll bring in that Marvel money and I'll, yeah, I'll they'll cast somebody uh, else to be my fake wife. <laughs> yeah, I'll marry her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, okay. Me. Emily Blunt's mind needs to go to this. This is what I would think. Like, okay, my husband is working for Marvel. He's bringing in the Marvel money. Dude. I can work for Marvel, and I can bring in the Marvel money, and we can bring dude. in double Marvel money. <laughs> I know, like, dude, what? <laughs> it would be crazy. I don't. I think you'd be cra- like, dude, if somebody offered you to be in an MCU movie, I think you'd be crazy not to take it. Yeah, yeah, you, you they make so much money doing those movies. It's it's insane. Like, literally, if besides I, if Toby was- McGuire, who made one million dollars. <laughs> dude, yeah, dude, dude, uh, apparently he only wanted fifteen million. From what and they I've gave heard. him less. <laughs> they gave him less, yeah. I'm, I'm like, dude, heavy. <laughs> you deserve the whole freaking budget of that film. <laughs> That's how good you are. What was the budget of the film? Well, I wonder. I think it was, I, I want to say it was 100 million. What was the. Wait, no, because no, I was supposed to be Batman. I, 200 million. Like 200 million. My apologies. Apologies. Dude, Civil War had a bigger budget. Huh. Civil War had a bigger budget than freaking uh, Spider-Man: No Way Home. It made yeah. more money. <laughs> All right, um, checking the time. We got a little over. We got an hour and five minutes until our time is up. Um, so we have the last piece of Marvel news right here. 
and move on to some Peacemaker, some DC, and some other stuff. All right. She-Hulk, Moon Knight, and Miss Marvel, this year's Disney Plus shows, will all have multiple seasons. Well, that's good. We are oh, getting a we're getting a se- all multiple seasons for Moon Knight, which is like great, and She Hulk, which is cool. I like that. And mm-hmm. um, okay, I I don't even know if I'm gonna like this Miss Marvel show. Most likely, in my mind, I'm like I'm not gonna like, it. but like I'm not gonna knock it till I try it. You know? Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna watch it, and if I do like it, um, if it's a charming show or something, I'll watch. I'll check out season two. But as of now, I'm not that interested in it. But I need a trailer first. Oh yeah, and I feel like the trailer's not even going to get me interested in it. I'm just going to have to watch it because the trailer's probably going to be like some girly, like high school music playing in the background while she's like learning how to become a superhero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I mean that's Miss Marvel for you, but I don't know. I'm like super nervous about that show. Yeah, it's going to set up Captain Marvel two, the Marvels. So I mean, as long as I can see, uh, crap, what's her name? Uh, she's in WandaVision. Oh, yeah, uh, Monica Rambo, who's supposed yeah, to be I, in Doctor Strange, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. And apparently, as the Illuminati, the uh, a member, since they're supposed to be introducing them, a multiversal hey. Illuminati. Well, I'm cool with that. Um, all right, but that's all of my Marvel news. Um, yeah. I had a lot of it, 15 pieces of Marvel news, but now. Let's give peace a chance, right? Let's talk about Peacemaker. Mm. All right. Peacemaker episode five. Spoilers, ladies and gentlemen, for episode five of Peacemaker, titled Monkey Dory. Uh, I, I saw that title. I originally thinking back to that char- missing Charlie the Gorilla thing in the last episode. <laughs> I was like, oh, Gorilla Grodd, he's coming. It's happening. It's happening. Gorilla and more, happening. And yeah. then more on that later. Um, yes. Anticipations going into this episode. <laughs> Well, um, I was, again, it's a Peacemaker episode, and I was uh, very, very excited. Now, you're coming off the heels of an episode that you didn't, that's your least, that was your least favorite so far. So, were you kind of, were you excited for this more? Excited for this one, or? Yeah, I was, uh, I don't know, you hoping I wasn't it was worried better. at all, just because, I mean, even though it was the last episode was <laughs> my least favorite. Mm-hmm. It's uh, still good. Yeah, it was still good. Like we said, um, the you know, the character development. Yes, and now um, this, this episode, awesome. I can you this could was argue. Was also far. Yes, you could argue though this episode had more character development, and it was yeah. more better character development. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> do you want me to disappoint you real quick? <laughs> 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 this one might be my least my least favorite. But <laughs> well, you told me you told me that I remember you saying that. You, yeah. Uh, All right. Again, again, just to make it clear, it's not a bad episode either. Not bad at all. And yeah. don't get me wrong, Darren is completely right. You need to have you need to have that character development. Yeah, you gotta have every TV show has a filler episode. Uh, yeah. WandaVisions was um, okay. Um, which one? There was an episode I remember that wasn't too. Um, it was the one that had the backstory for Wanda. It was like the one before the last episode. I, I would say episode th- uh, episode three. The one where the seventies episode? No, the seventies episode. No, no, no. Episode three was when you first get introduced to Monica and uh, Jimmy Woo. Oh, uh, well, yeah. But what I was saying, the filler episode yeah. that was it's good because that. that was showing us what's going on in the outside world. That advanced yeah. the story a lot. The filler episode yeah. is the one where Agatha was taking Wanda throughout all of the um, like. You, you, really past. To, you really think that's a filler episode? I think it was a filler because it was a, it was expanding on the character stories without really expanding on what the main story of the show was. <laughs> okay. Um, that's exactly what this Peacemaker episode was doing, but I think it really worked out well. And this did expand part of the story a bit. Yeah. Um, I'd, say what, I'd say what I liked a lot about it was obviously the ending. And uh, mm-hmm. yes. the whole uh, I'd say the whole fight scene inside of, like the warehouse was really cool. Mm-hmm. Eat peace. I, <laughs> but if I'm going to be honest, I think no, the, the jokes in this episode didn't really... I don't know if I really care for the jokes in this episode as I do with the others. Yeah, 
I, oh, okay, yeah. the whole scene where they were talking at the table, naming off all those people. That was yeah, good. He's like naming off all those people. I, I got kind of annoyed with that. Probably wrong. I thought it was they, funny. They, he just kept naming everyone. Was like, oh my. God. He kept naming. I'm like, okay, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm like, I think it's like longer. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think it's longer, but he names Freddie Stroma and James Gunn. Yeah, I like that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, let me think. Some more jokes. Obviously, uh, now you got the Eleventh Street Kids, right? Yeah. Uh, which I want to point out. I was watching New Rock Stars. Shout out to them, by the way. Breakdowns on all the stuff that they do. I watch it all the time. Yeah. Um, they uh, talked about how in the comics, and it was also in Smallville because I remember it from that. Um, Task Force X, the Suicide Squad, had a br- had a branch off group called Checkmate. And I don't know if you ever heard of them. It's just like a group like Task Force X, except they're overseen by Task Force X. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what this group of people are in Peacemaker is the new che- is the checkmate overseen by Amanda Waller, but without working for Amanda Waller. Yeah. That's yeah, kind of what they're doing with this. Um, and now, you know, they've all, they're kind of like friends now, you know, um, in the group chat. <laughs> um, with the, uh, I've you I'm going to, I've started using <laughs> that weird merman emoji. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. Um, I posted it. Doing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to start using it more. It means yeah, everything. Yeah, you better. Um, but now, you know, Economos and, um, uh, Peacemaker, they're friends now, and uh, Harcourt starting to get. A, she's kind of acting weird um, at the end of that, and I was like, at first, I was like, she better not be butterfly, but then she starts smiling, started recording them and stuff. Yeah, and I was like, okay, <laughs> we're good. But everyone's like good friends now. End of the episode. Uh, let's see what happened at the end of the episode. Oh yeah, the I mean, uh, I know what happened yeah. at the end, but I'm talking about like right before that. Um, it was Peacemaker and Adebayo in their um, yes. Yeah, so Adebayo goes to Peacemaker's house. Peacemaker yeah. makes her drink. And what what was <laughs> yeah. that? Um, it was like a list of a bunch of crappy stuff. Uh, yeah, it was like. But she said it tastes like crap. <laughs> like yeah. literal crap. And they, right. and they just have a beer. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, um, um, let me let me read off this right here. Um, I got the recap for it, so we can discuss it as we go on, so we can better go through the show. Mm. All right. So, um. Continuing to look into the butterfly threat, Peacemaker, Amelia Harcourt, Leota Adebayo, Vigilante, and John Economos head to a facility that they suspect is run by the aliens. Here's what happened next. According to this. All right. It opens with Peacemaker joining the team for a debriefing from Mern about the butterfly threat, in which the leader tells them all they need to know about the creatures. Um, also, they talked about how monkeys and people were like equally smart, or monkeys maybe more smarter than humans and stuff like that. I was like, if yeah. they don't introduce Detective Chimp. Detective, yes. Um, That's a James Gunn character, if I've ever seen one. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It is all right. Hey, please. <laughs> um, uh, please, Detective Chimp. <laughs> Detective Chimp solo movie. <laughs> I'd watch it. Um, Mern is certainly the expert on the subject, given he is a butterfly himself. Not that the team are aware of this. During the briefing, Peacemaker goes on a friendly rant, berating Economos for his PowerPoint presentation, his beard, and the fact that he sent his dad to prison by swapping their fingerprints earlier in the season. Yes. Um, and I don't know, you watched the promo for episode uh, six, right? Nope, I don't watch Didn't, promos. I told, I, hold on. I, hold on. <laughs> Maybe I was talking to somebody else, but yeah, I, probably, I guess it was. Um, you but I want to I'm like, you know, it didn't come down, buddy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I'll talk about that in a second, though. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Um, Afterwards, the team set off to stake out the warehouse. They pair off to Peacemaker and Adebayo going to the front, and Harcourt and Vigilante sneaking in the back. doesn't take long for the shooting to start. Peacemaker begins firing straight off the bat because he uses his helmet's X-ray vision to see who's being controlled by a butterfly and who isn't. More on this later. Um, Meanwhile, at the back of the building... Harcourt and Vigilante discover that the facility is being used to distribute the goop-like food that the butterflies eat. When they investigate further, they draw the attention of the aliens. The duo try to fend off the creatures, but are attacked by a mysterious assailant. Peacemaker and Adebayo arrive on the scene and blow up the butterflies. When Adebayo goes looking for Harcourt and Vigilante, though, she's attacked by the assailant who thwarted the other two, a talking silverback gorilla. I thought it was Gorilla Grodd. 
I saw him and I was like, oh, here we go. It's happening. And then he talked in the scene. He was like, die, human. I was like, it's Gorilla Grodd. And then it wasn't Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> yeah, it was not. But we do know now <laughs> that butterflies can take over animals. So that means Eagly. Is and there's a, a butterfly in the same building or same house as Eagly. Yes. No. <laughs> um, or well, if it's no, a good butterfly. <laughs> so it's not a good butterfly. It's just mm-hmm. your butterfly. Uh, well, but judging off part of the promo, we get a clip that might not mean anything. Um, a little <laughs> snippet of the butterfly in the jar and John Cena and Eagly are looking at it. And it with the goop that was inside of it, it draws a peace symbol inside the jar. Oh. So maybe he just like maybe it was just high from the smoke that he blew in there. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, was, I don't know. Uh, but a there's more on man. that promo later. There's another spot that um kind of teases who the main villain of the show actually is. Yes. Uh but when Adebayo goes looking for Harkon Vigilante, you already read that. Here we go. All four team members try to fight off the gorilla with varying success, mainly because the beast has enhanced strength and barely seems to notice shots or knife attacks. I wish it was Gorilla Grodd. Um, The group are rescued by Economos, who arrives just in time to save Peacemaker from a gruesome end by using a chainsaw to kill the gorilla. That was right. He went, die, human, and he went to hit him, and he got murdered by a chainsaw. I was so happy. That scene, my emotions went in like a roller coaster. I was like, oh, this is crazy. And then he was like, die, human. I was like, Grodd! And then I saw a chainsaw go through his chest. I was like, oh. Oh, my God. Um, it seems pretty graphic. It, it, it was, it, yeah, it was awesome though. But it ensures that Economist finally gets some recognition and respect from the supervillain of Peacemaker. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, after their ordeal, Peacemaker and the crew take a well-deserved rest. Mern tells them they can try to find the source of the butterfly's food at a later date because tonight they should relax. The team start bonding after all their arguments, and Harcourt even creates a WhatsApp group chat for them to send a team picture she took after the mission. It's all very mm-hmm. sweet, and it only goes sweet gets sweeter when Peacemaker asks Adebayo to join them for a celebratory drink. Adebayo gives the supervillain advice on his romantic interest in Harcourt, and also tells him he doesn't need to act like a bully to push people away from him. I was bullied because I was a bully. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, that's where the sweet moment ends, though. When Peacemaker goes to the bathroom, Adebayo plants the diary she was given by her mother in his home. For what purpose, we shall no doubt see later in the series. Uh, what do you think yeah. that is? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's his diary, right? Well, we don't know. I think they, they made that to make it look like his diary. Well, I mean, he should know if he had a diary or not. Exactly. Right? I think they're planting this because they're going to bring him back to prison. Um, I wonder if there's like an explanation of his brother's death and it's like told more detail or something. I don't know. He, they planted it, so there's got a tracker in it, which why would it have a tracker in it? Because it's just in one place anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know where you want to track his home if he already know it's at. So it, 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 I don't believe it's a tracker. And um, I, Peacemaker would obviously know if he, he wouldn't be like, oh, what's this? Even though he might. I don't know. But mm-hmm. um, I will see, but I'm pretty sure it's some evidence and they're going to call the cops at the end and or something. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel I like Amanda Waller is going to be in the last episode. So yeah. He could get recruited back to Task Force X, maybe. I want to say, I want to say we get a. Yeah, I guess maybe Amanda. Uh, do you remember um, whenever it first showed that diary at one point? It had the Wayne uh, Foundation yeah. logo. That wasn't on yeah. it this time. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? So maybe it's a fake diary. <laughs> Could be. Uh, we never know. But we'll find out later in the series. All right, and mm-hmm. then we get to the ending. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I, I do want to point out real quick. I did. I originally I thought she was going to find the butterfly or something. It was going to break, like, and it was going to end off at like her maybe getting. Hit, she did like, see the butterfly though. Did she see it? Yeah, I remember he showed it, and he was. Like, she was like, "Oh, you kept that?" He was like, "Yeah, I kept it," uh, or something like that. Um, there was a there was oh, a scene. Dude. It was right when she was in there. Oh, dude, I don't even like remember that. Okay, never mind. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh. So okay. after leaving Peacemaker to his celebrations, Adebayo goes back to the team's office and, in a slightly inebriated state, puts on Peacemaker's helmet. She activates the x-ray vision for fun and looks around, only to discover that Mern is a butterfly. 
In a dramatic turn of events, Mern chases her out of the building, and the episode ends on a cliffhanger with the leader glaring at a fallen Adebayo in the rain. I thought I was like, "Oh, it's just about to kill her." I was like, "Don't, do not kill her." And then the episode okay. ends. I was like, oh, "Come on!" Yeah. Oh yeah, well, I just about to end right now. It's end. That's like a that's like a CW season finale cliffhanger. <laughs> Like they it's, do that in the uh, season finale and make you wait five months to see what happens. It, it's crazy, but luckily we got Thursday. Yeah. So. And there's only two episodes, no, three episodes left. Yeah. Uh, so we don't do it that long. Yeah. I love this show, man. I <laughs> love it. After credit scene was um, a little bit of an extended thing of uh, the him naming off people, which was part of the outtakes. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for one of these after credit scenes to actually push along the story. Mm hmm. But um, now let me talk about the promo real quick um, for episode six. The thing that interested me, uh, we see his dad getting out of prison. Um, the finger, he's doing fingerprints. And he was getting out and some guy was picking him up. I didn't know who it was. He gets in the car and the guy was like, where to? And he says, I need to go to my house. I'm going to kill my son. And it shows a shot of the white dragon suit. And I'm like, oh, uh, yes. I'm going to see him suit up. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I think my theory is going to come true whenever he was like, "There's weak points where the cloth is, or whatever." I think mm-hmm. Peacemaker's going to remember that. He's, I don't think does he kill his dad though. Uh, I, think, I, f- I feel like he's trying not to be that as much of a killer as he is, or at least his dad's a bad person. But yeah. he justified that that the one part he was like, "He's still my dad." Mm-hmm. I, f- I feel like he he'll do it. He's going to kill him. Yeah. Find out, or maybe not. I don't know. I, I, I'm re- I need to watch the episode to find out. But yeah. does he suit up oh. next episode? I don't believe it. I believe second to last episode we see him in the suit, um, or maybe yeah. the end of this next one, and then he'll be the villain for the rest or most of it. Maybe the last episode he'll be one of the villains, along with yeah. whoever the leader of the butterflies is, which would be crazy if it was his dad. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think honestly, we're just gonna. I don't know. It's not, yeah, never mind. You're probably right. You're probably right. Never know. All right. But that was the recap of Peacemaker episode five. Now let's get to a rating. Um, If you could rate this episode out of 10, what would you rate it? I got, I got to think. So you go first. Well, again, this is probably my least favorite. I, I hate because I can't really. I know. I know. I got what mine is. I, I don't. <laughs> It's not bad. It, again, when I say something's probably my least favorite, it doesn't mean it's a terrible episode most of the time. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I, I, I mean, I can't really defend my statement of saying that without, I can't really give an explanation for it, but I just didn't really care for it. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to give it like a seven. Um, I also give it an eight. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's good. I still like the episode. Great character development. Yeah. Uh, really yeah. pushed it along. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, I mean, it was lacking in certain parts. But overall, mm-hmm. that was pretty good. I, so honestly, nice. I don't think the jokes really hit it home for me in this one. Well, there wasn't too many really jokes in the first place. Mm-hmm. It was very um, coming off of a serious ending of an episode, so it still started serious. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah. So you got a seven. I give it an eight. We'll see it next. We'll see the next one. Uh, this upcoming Thursday. Excited for that. Mm, yeah. um, Very excited. Uh, I think it's going to leave off on another. I guarantee clip. it will. I'm ready for one of these after credit scenes to actually like push the story. I feel like Dude, the final oh one. Gosh. The final I, I one. Forgot, I forgot to watch the end credit scene. I just told. It's I like play. it's an extended scene of the him naming off people. It's part of the outtake. Oh, okay. okay. Of course, the outtake video. It's like it was in the. He names off like. Um, I see him off from that. Burton Ernie, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Muppet, okay. the two guys from the Muppet. I think he named that in the episode. I can't remember. Yeah, really he did not make- yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought you were saying I was just like some clip James Gunn share. Okay. I know I was the incredible scene. It was okay. part of the incredible scene. It was like a whole one and a half minute him naming off mm-hmm. people. Yeah. When the heck is the freaking show going to change? Like the intro? I'm not sure. Well, you didn't notice. It's the intro started in this one after like kind of like a somber scene, and it kind of for me it kind of dampened the mood of it a little bit. All the scenes that right before the intro starts have always been funny, but now it's it was like kind of sad a little bit, 
and then it well, it didn't like it didn't feel as like awesome watching it. I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, well, so maybe that's well, what he means. I didn't feel that way, but you know, maybe maybe you're right. But um, what was I just saying? Um, about oh yeah, the after credit scene. At the end of it, he goes, "All right, you're." Pro-, he names um like Conan and Seth Meyers and uh you know mm. those people. And at the end of it, he was like, "Okay." Economist says, "Okay, you're probably right. Half of those people probably should be in jail, but not Ariana Grande. She looks too innocent." And then uh, Peacemaker goes, "Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right." And then just ends. <laughs> Maybe you're right. <laughs> mm, uh, okay. Yeah, but that was our talk. A Peacemaker episode five. Uh, definitely go check the show out. We've got three episodes left. It's going to be great. All right. Now let's move on to some more Peacemaker information. According to James Gunn, Peacemaker has a, quote, really good chance of being renewed for season two. Yeah. Um, oh, well, oh, well, oh, it's just my birthday. Okay, it's my birthday now. <laughs> yeah, it makes uh, sense. Happy birthday. I'm going to pick up some smacks real quick. I'm very bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. but, anyway, sorry, uh, but I'll take a season two of Peacemaker. I mean, why not? I mean, I'm kind of curious what story they could tell with it. Yeah. Obviously, I don't know. I want to. I want to. Uh, like a physical person villain. No, I don't want like another alien or anything like creature or something like that. I want like Kite Man. Come on, he Kite Man was in that last episode that yeah, mentioned. Hey, he, he was. He was hit to that. He we was find out James that. Gunn said that he is technically Peacemaker's Joker. And I'm like, G- give me that. Like, <laughs> oh, that, live that. action Kite Man. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah, that, that'd be cool. Well, I already got Polka Dot Man. I mean, you did Polka Dot Man. You mentioned Kite Man. Bat might might show up. I don't, know Conor, I don't know where Condiment King is, but he's going to come in sometime probably. He has to. He has please, to. Please, please. J- James. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gunn. <laughs> please. <laughs> I beg of uh, you. <laughs> Mr. Gunn? <laughs> you liked our tweet. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. But yeah, season two of Peacemaker, he said all they have to do now is cross their T's and dot their I's um, mm-hmm. and just hope that it gets through. But uh, he brought another show, a spin off. I don't know if it's a show, it's a spin off to the Suicide Squad to HBO Max. And HBO Max are really loving the idea of it. Um, but well, he's, working like on, idea of it he's working on the spin off, and it won't be as much a comedy as Peacemaker, he said. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's going to be a different genre of. Uh, Whatever it is, we don't know if it's a show yeah. or a movie, but he said um, he is working on it, and it's something really awesome. And I'm sitting mm-hmm. here thinking, okay, so obviously we talked about um, he was making something last week, but he has officially announced it now. So I'm talking about it now. Uh, yeah, it could be Bloodsport and or Ratcatcher. Could be King Shark. Um, could be Harley Quinn. I don't know if she why she would want. I'll take the Harley Quinn show. But like not another movie because Birds of Prey was like a Harley Quinn movie and that was like awful. Ugh. Um, <laughs> maybe those horrible writers on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, I feel like I have to watch it because Black Canary was in that and she's getting her own solo movie apparently. And then they're supposed to introduce Green yeah. Arrow, and so I feel like I have to watch it. Yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're like, but I'm dreading it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like miserable about it. Uh, that's like you with Miss Marvel. <laughs> it's me oh, yeah, with yeah, Prey. I want to say you can't. You can't I can't. Oh. Okay. Um, I swear. I think they changed the title. But wasn't Birds of Prey called Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn? Yeah, it was that whole title. Yeah, I mean they and then, changed it, didn't they, to something else? Yeah, they changed, they changed it to just Birds of Prey. <laughs> well. <laughs> Because the title was just so awful and long, and everyone's like, yeah. hey, I'm not. <laughs> That's true. Well, at least I never watched the Disney movie Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen that movie many times, and it's a long title. All right. Uh, but I think, I don't think this is a weasel show, even though it could be, and it could just be a show about him eating children. Yeah. But um, Weasel is stranded in Corto Maltese, by the way. So, mm-hmm. um, we could have something yeah. like that, but I'm almost 100% positive that this is a show about the detachable kit. Yes, please. Or a movie, or a movie. We don't know. 
Nope. Most likely a show, though. I don't think he'd do another. He'll probably do another show and then do Suicide Squad 2. Hmm. Or it could be a Vigilante spinoff. Okay. I would like a Vigilante spinoff, please. <laughs> I would like anything that James Gunn will give us. <laughs> hmm. I will take a lollipop chainsaw live action. What the heck, dude? That's <laughs> a freaking callback. Holy <laughs> What a reference there. <laughs> you know, I thought about getting that game the other day. Old uh, school game. I, I played it once. Uh, I mean, old school gaming game? Uh, people know about God, that. Dude, dude, I remember, dude. I remember seeing posters for that game everywhere. I can't believe you just freaking mentioned that <laughs> game. Holy crap. No, dude, that's the best part of this episode. No, it's uh, what's that movie he made? Uh, Super? Did you ever watch Super. that? Uh, Super. With. Um, what? Dude, I have seen Super. Dude, that, dude, that movie is freaking fantastic. You ever, you ever um, movie? Real quick, my computer's about to die, so I'm going to mute my mic real quick, plug this up. Uh, you can continue talking about why you like Super. <laughs> uh, Super is a really good movie, movie and it stars... Um, holy crap. Um, what's his... Oh, gosh, what's his name? What's his name? It is Dwight from The Office. Um, Rain Wilson, Rain Wilson, and um, Rain Wilson plays this. Him, his wife gets kidnapped by, I think. Uh, oh crap! It's Liv Tyler. I didn't know that. Um, by named Sarah gets kidnapped by, um, you know, Kevin Bacon's character. I'm just and going over the plot play. of the movie now. <laughs> I'm going over. Oh, forget, dude. This is we need to do this for extra beef one day. I've never seen it, so I've heard. Um, of it. Well, he, well, he plays this character called the Crimson Bolt. And dude, he, mm-hmm. he just whacks people with a freaking um, with a uh, holy crap! What, what, what is it? What's it called? It's like a wrench, but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's um, a baseball bat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 it's a. Uh, uh, by the way, just want to let you know, we got like thirty minutes. So, oh, well, well, anyways, well, good. Just please go check out Super. It, it's, it's, it's good. I like yeah. that. Maybe. Yeah, but, um, that's enough naming off old James Gunn projects. Uh, mm. all right. Last piece of news that I have, um, is that Joker 2 is starting filming in 2020. Yes. Thank uh, you. Yes. Uh, being still being written by Todd, Todd Phillips. I want to say his name was, right? Oh, good. Um, being written by that, uh, Willem Dafoe's expressed interest in being in that. We talked about that last week. <laughs> Making me the Joker. <laughs> oh my god! Um, but what do you want for a Joker two story? Like not thinking Willem Dafoe. Like I if that weren't to happen, what would you want? I don't know, man. Oh, by the way, uh, the weapon he uses is a monkey wrench, and he whacks people with it. But anyways, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what I would want. I mean, obviously, he's the Joker now. He's not been officially named the Joker, even though they have to do that. He did. Well, he is. He did. He said, "Call me Joker" or whatever. Uh, yeah, call me Joker. Um, I don't. Whew. He so uh, he, he he officially became Joker. The Waynes were murdered at the end of it. Uh, we saw him. Was he escaping at the end of it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So he's going to be out there. I think. I guess building his empire. Um, I feel like he's going to meet Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> Yeah, I'm him and sure. Penguin and Joker always have had a like kind of rivalry. Yeah, yeah, they have. Um, I don't. I'm not too Maybe sure. Maybe introduce Penguin. other villains that are taking over at different places of Gotham. The rise of the villains, if you will, and um, Joker is not happy about it. Yeah, they're taking his fame away that he just got. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <sighs> I like my idea. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I guess we'll go with that because I have no idea what I want. I would take I, all the villains. Give me um, I, I, I Two Face, Two Face, Penguin, Riddler, mm. like mentioned, and then we can get spinoffs about them. Oh yeah, oh yes, please. Oh. We're getting that. We're getting a Penguin show already on HBO Max based off the Batman, so probably not a Penguin spinoff, but mm-hmm. I like a Two Face show, a Two Face movie. I uh, would like a. Uh, I, so I want a Riddler movie. movie. I've talked about a Riddler movie a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. He had a horrible oh. childhood. He got ab- mentally abused by his father and was made fun of for being smart. So I think that'd be a good one. <laughs> Nerd. Just yelling at him. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. 
Uh, I would want. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, obviously, you know, you mentioned Batman villain. You know, Mister Freeze is willing to mm-hmm. pop up. Yeah, but hit, um, but. I guarantee he'll be the villain of the Batman too. I can't. <laughs> Man, don't give me ideas. Don't, no, don't, don't even, don't even give me ideas. Is because that I'd kill for the color palette of the next movie. Do you think people. they? Ooh, do you think they introduce the um, the thought of the Court of Owls in the Joker? I maybe. Now we got to remember this is a story about Joker. Batman is not there right now. I assume it won't be a time jump unless it is. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. I mean, Bat, last time we checked, Batman's a little boy. Yeah, and, yeah. So literally, when Batman gets older and he's fighting the Joker, he's going to be beating an elderly man. <laughs> so that's why I'm wondering that. I would like for that. So Will he's not the real Joker. Joker. You would think. I would like. I, I think. I but, think the real Joker is a persona of that. Or something, and somebody well, gets inspired would, by him, and then like uh, this is what I want. I want them to. They're kind of being quiet right now about it, mm-hmm. but I would like freaking it. T- come to find out, the Batman and the Joker is it just called the? Is it called the Joker? Is it no, it's Joker? just called, it's just called Joker. Okay, I would just like the reveal of the, those two movies actually take place in the same world. That would be a freaking cool. That would be a cool at the end of the movie surprise for the Batman. I think, but that would be really cool. But this is why I think you are right. He, Arthur it will be an old man, but I would like maybe we see you know what? Young, and he takes persona of him, and, or like some type of like adult or whatever, kind of gets inspired by him, and then turn and then it turns into Willem Dafoe. And then Willem Dafoe, Dafoe can play old yeah. Joker. I'm just <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, really, how old was Willem Dafoe supposed to be in freaking No Way Home? Uh, he was supposed to be like in his 40s and 50s. Yeah, probably. He was a dead. So, like, I don't even. So I don't. I don't think it's out of the question for him to cause it just kind of maybe just de-age it a bit. Maybe. Well, we had those Willem rumors Willem already Dafoe. going around when Joker first came out. Um, that, uh, that the next one. Uh, he would die. He wouldn't be the Joker, and that it would get passed down to somebody else. And during the movie, I hope. I, well, how, yeah. Well, maybe we have a time jump then. then. I think possibly, because uh, I can't see him just stop being it. Now, the next. you brought up a good point with the Joker and the Batman possibly being connected. Yeah. I was going to say yeah, that, that that Bruce I'm Wayne, that. that Bruce Wayne, had the same hair as Robert Pattinson. <laughs> same hair. I mean, then. <laughs> I mean, we haven't seen what the Wayne Wayne's. I mean, have we? Well, yeah, we have. Like, there, we do know who's cast as him in the Batman. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not the same guys. But dang it, <laughs> uh, we will not be seeing his origin that. story in this movie, though. They confirmed that in the Batman. Yeah, movie. yeah. Which I, you know, I'm all. Well, we've seen it enough that. anyway. I already know. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. we've seen it enough. Uh, um, That's like watching Superman uh, for 30 minutes, uh, getting sent in a pod out of Krypton before Krypton blows up. Like I've seen that too yeah. many times. So I don't care. I, I don't know. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. you um, but that was like one of the only times we saw. It. I saw, and then I saw Smallville. To, to be honest, it was kind of cool to see the different creatures from uh, Krypton. Yeah, I saw Smallville, um, Supergirl. Uh, when I first watched that, which was good at first, and then too many, too many, too many, too many things to count. Yeah. Too many things to count. Yeah. But um, but I'm I'm hoping Willem Dafoe does come in as. <laughs> Problem is, I don't want to be a persona. I want I want I well, I do want to be a persona for like Batman's Joker, mm-hmm. but I don't want him to be like a sidekick and he just like dies or whatever. I want him to be the Joker. If yeah. not that, I'm freaking Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix, kidnap just, some lady, and then, then Batman <laughs> shows up. Like, yeah. so, you know? I just feel like um, Joaquin Phoenix had to lose a lot of weight to do that movie. Well, I don't think he has and, to now. Well, now he's like back up. He's he's kind of gained oh, some weight now, and you can see he looks yeah. completely different. <laughs> yes, yes. But I, now, I, if he were to do two, he'd have to lose all that weight again, most likely. And they well, wouldn't CG it. It would look weird. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't think he would. I don't think he, honestly. I mean, oh, we I talked about he, this last week, though. This exact conversation. Yeah, I don't think he needs to lose. Yeah, uh, lose no, no. We'll I see. Think be uh, all right, we got. We're hitting a thirty-minute mark right now. Um, yes, I know you. Need. I know you got. So that's the end of my DC stuff, and that's the end of my news. Uh, but, okay. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll just mention quick gaming stuff real quick. All right. And then, uh, yes. Then we'll get on to both of our rants here. Your your uh, rant. 
Yeah, well, yeah, it's my rant. I don't like it, me, but you're I'm gonna not help, talking about it. You're going to help me do it. Well, I had to listen to you talk about Joss Whedon. Yeah. I completely agreed. So I'm going to read, about, I'm gonna read about Joss Whedon while we're doing this. I swear. You better not read. <laughs> I'm going to read The Undoing of Joss Whedon. <laughs> Anyways, um, the Green Goblin comes to uh, Fortnite with a brand new glider animation, pumpkin bomb, emo, pumpkin bomb stick, and, you know, Green Goblin. Uh, Wait, what? Skin and a loading screen. Pumpkin so. bomb stick. <laughs> well, I mean, what? I mean, what else would you they call, call it? What's it called? Uh, Pickaxe. It's a pumpkin. Yeah, it's a pumpkin bomb on a stick. That's what it is. I mean, I mean yeah, <laughs> I'm not wrong. Um, so, uh, thoughts on this, Darian? Uh. Okay. I haven't bought it. I have not bought it. <laughs> I've not bought it. <laughs> no, I want to, but I'm just I'm waiting. I'm trying to I'm buy me another PS5 here. Um but do you think it was cool? Yeah. I went I did look, go on the game just You're not excited. <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm not I mean I think it's cool that he's in it. I'm just like okay. <laughs> I wish they could put a uh, freaking No Way Home movie skin like from like Willem Dafoe. If they did that, then I would buy it. Well, the way it, it yeah. looked, it looked like a like metallic Classic Green yeah. Goblin. Yeah. Like a combination. Okay, I get you. Okay, I got you. Uh, next news, uh, Spider-Man. Okay, Marvel's Avengers brought in a finally an MCU suit for their Spider-Man. And it was <laughs> the suit from uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, yes. we think- um, I, think, I think it looks good. <laughs> I know, I know, I I love, I love how you and Skylar just want to hate on me 24 7. Say, like, yeah, this dude's cool. The game sucks. Does it fix the gameplay? I was like, man, can I just not have a good moment? (laughs) No. Yeah, we'll we'll be sitting there and he'll be like, oh, I'm so excited with the skin. Oh, I could use it on Spider Man. I'll be like, oh, yeah, the skin's pretty cool. Gameplay sucks, though. (laughs) his gameplay. Uh, man, I can't have a win, can I? I, I swear, I'm going to play Marvel's Avengers tomorrow. Skylar will message me saying, happy birthday. Hope you ain't playing Avengers or something. <laughs> I, 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 I hope I you're mean, not I, playing I, Avengers. Some, spend your time. I, mean, your probably, I would have a boring birthday. birthday. <laughs> I know, grinding on Avengers. I need to I need to try to get that Hawkeye skin, though. But, uh, oh, but, here he goes. but besides that, I think the skin looked pretty good. But obviously, the proportions are kind of weird here. Because it's, it actually, I actually think it looks better. In the movies, do a bit purely because this is a more muscular Spider Man, mm-hmm. and I thought I kind I like the look of it. So, so, uh, and by the way, the No Way Home and uh, Far From Home red suits are completely different. I was hoping they would do the No Way Home where it's like the belt is fully complete. Yeah, Far From Home has like the belt missing. It's like a bleak piece of black between the belt, mm-hmm. but. Well, that's that. All right, I'm putting out a, a post on our Facebook right now, um, but I'm okay. listening to you. But uh, well, I mean, that's all the gaming news, so so that's pretty much it. Now let's there, now. But, okay, wait, wait, oh, hold on, hold on, let me finish. Wait. Say, there is a current trend right now. Oh great! I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, of no roadmap. <laughs> oh, thanks for reminding me. No, I, I was really hoping we'd get one this week. No, nope. but no, we are supposed to get. It, well, fans are crying out to Warner Brothers Games to, to put the Batman suit in Arkham Knight what? as a deal. But that game's like, they they've stopped that game though, right? <laughs> yes, they have, but I want it. <laughs> I want it too. Dude, I mean, I hate it because, dude, when's the, when's the next time we're going to get a Batman game? I mean, unless Gotham Knights, possibly. Um, if they reveal Batman to possibly be alive in the Suicide Squad game, uh, maybe. I mean, you ain't gonna play as him, though. Yeah, I mean, maybe not. He might. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he could be possibly alive in Gotham Knights. I mean, oh, yes, that's true too. Though. Yeah, you said Suicide Squad. I'm like, yeah, wait. well, Suicide Squad, though, like he could show up, especially in the yeah, Arkham but... universe. We'd already think he faked his death anyway. Um, yeah. So I mean, well, we're just going to see. We're just going to see. But you I, know what? Spider Man No Way Home's ending was just like Arkham Knight's ending. Oh. Wow. Because yeah, they both, if if he did fake his death, then Bruce Wayne is no more, but the Batman remains. Peter Parker is no more, but Spider Man remains. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it's just similar how the outcome was. I mean, exactly. Was, so so. Oh my god! Oh my god! Anyways, let's go on to the big rant here. Three letters, Darian. N F T. 
What? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, explain DC what an very- NFT is for some people. <sighs> Non-fundable tokens. So basically, you buy. Wait, a, I'm pretty sure it's not fundable. Yeah, non-fundable. It's token. NFT stands for non-fungible. Fungible. I just looked it up. Is it really fun, oh, fungible? Non-fungible, or it could be fungible. Uh, well, dang, but, I'm going on a whole rant here. I don't even know what's even called. <laughs> <laughs> it's a non-interchangeable unit of data stored in a blockchain, a form of digital ledger. Types of NFT data units may be associated with digital files such as photos, videos, and audio. Because each token is uniquely identifiable, NFTs differ from blockchain cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Maybe maybe we should sell some NFTs. Imagine selling an NFT of hello. No, we'll stop. <laughs> We're right? not. I'm not giving it. No. <laughs> so DC has hyped. On, I, I'm trying to remember who did it first. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say DC started doing it. Then Marvel started doing it, and I'm like, of course, you know the big, big, the top two con people are doing this. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, whatever. <sighs> then something was the last straw. Someone I could count, a, a, a company I think I could count on of knowing, hey, this this NFT thing is so stupid. We're not doing it. Mm-hmm. Has failed me. I don't know if they felt how they failed you, Darian. Um, I know they failed Spillman. I know yes. they failed him. They have okay, so they me, have... Darren Spillman. Spillman is okay. this company's guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Spillman would sell his children. He would sell his child and wife. <laughs> 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 I know he would. Uh, no, no, he wouldn't. <laughs> um, but, and of course, we are talking about Valiant Comics. All right, and I just... <laughs> I don't think NFTs belong on this planet. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry. They don't. And if you believe so, that's your opinion. But I, I don't think it's a good idea. And I just don't see the point in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Darren, do, uh, I know you've looked more into this for the Valiant uh, one than I have. Um, yeah. Let me give my input. Uh, uh, this is not. Do, it's like a roadmap, right? For it. Here, you give your input. We'll talk more about it. So, um, let me go on their website here and look it up. ValiantNFT.com. <laughs> he freaking sent me the picture. Yeah, it sold out. What morons are buying this? Yes, it did sell out all the NFTs. But let me uh, uh, NFT.ValiantEntertainment.com. Um, and we're going to do a Valiant episode soon. Um, possibly next weekend, maybe. I don't know. Um, but we're going to get yeah. Spillman on here to talk about Shadow Man, but we'll probably also talk about this. Yes, I'll be fan. Yeah. Uh, but they announced the um, Genesis, the all-inclusive Genesis token, a series of character NFT drops, revolutionary blockchain gaming, and more. Valiant is truly defining the immersive next-generation Web3 experience. Join the Valiant universe in the metaverse today. Uh, <laughs> um, you get, it, you have. No, no, no. Talk about the game part. Well, hang on. Um, I'm gonna go through it all. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You have the Valiant Season One Genesis Mint Pass sold out. You can't get it anymore. Available oh. January 26. Holders receive free mint for the first six character NFTs. Access to premium utility in gaming. Early pre-sale access to future Valiant Universe drops. Access to unlockable digital content. Access and discounts to merch in real life events and comics. Access to members only Discord channels and more to come. Now, they also introduced the Punk Mambo NFT. Punk Mambo being one of their heroes um, or anti-heroes, whatever they are. I don't think any Valiant characters are heroes, really. Um, But available in quarter 21, 2022, yet first stage will be a pre-art reveal of Punk Mambo assets, pre-sale and public sale to follow, art reveal a a few days after that, including traits, rarity, and unique properties, character access, and an upcoming play-to-earn game. Character will become Avatar in our Metaverse game. And more to come. So they're making a map. Do you do? Oh, oh. <laughs> no. Play so to earn game. game. God, no, man. <laughs> you know the price. Oh. Like, dude, I don't know what to even say. Hey, and, and I know that rumor. Now, game play to earn game. Um, just so I understand this a little bit better, explain exactly what they do. Compare it to another game. What do you mean? Play to earn game. Just so I can, like, offic- get, like, a official. A play to earn game. Yes. Yeah, so uh, 
You mean you mean pay to win? It says play to earn. So play basically, to earn. basically play to win. I, uh, I'm guessing. Play, you saying play or pay? Sorry, play. Play, play. To like earn. play the play to earn. What is that? I'm I'm guessing it just sounds like. Well, here I'll look at the official definition. Well, I was gonna look at it too. So. <laughs> Hey, sorry, I'm making sure because I don't want to play to earn NFT games. What? Wait. It's well, like okay, they're games, they're NFT games, and you uh, collect NFTs with the by playing. Okay, here we go. Play to earn games refer to the concept of gaming, which a platform provides its players with a chance to earn any form of in-game asset that can be transferred to the real world as a valuable resource. <sighs> yeah, yeah. At least it's not a real. Well, it is a game. Uh, here's the thing. That's what I can. Kind of, I can kind of get behind a bit of twenty minute couple, mark, by the way. A couple of NFT ideas, such as I think the metaverse could be a kind of a cool, cool idea. I mean, the game, the way they talked about it, that might be cool. But I'm just not like a fan of the metaverse. Like, what is the point? It's like VR like, chat, but like, like professional that's what i'm thinking of like imagine how cool it would be because do you remember uh playstation home uh what for, for playstation home do you not know what that is uh i have a vague memory there's someone, there's someone on the ps3 i have a vague memory of that okay so what ps3 home was you had to make your avatar and you had to go through this whole world and you know you bought the, you got you bought that you had this house and you could like buy stuff off the playstation store and have it in there and stuff I do not remember that. <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm thinking of what a metaverse is. I'm probably thinking of it completely wrong. But if it's something like that, it could be cool. With like VR and all that. But I saw this freaking program. Uh, I saw this demo of a Walmart shopping thing in VR, and it was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. All right. So it's just I don't know. I just I don't like the direction this is going, and I was hoping that thing would just not do well but unfortunately it's sold out so Mm -hmm. i'm just i'm telling i don't think this is a good idea for for the the comic book industry movie industry or gaming industry whatsoever i agree um and then down here below the stuff on the valiant nft.valiantentertainment.com um and in no way hate to Valiant at all for this. We just, NFTs don't think. There was one guy that did speak his opinion out. Big time worker with Valiant. Uh, spoke his opinion out and they blocked him on social media. So, uh, Really? Yeah, I don't want to get blocked by Valiant. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I just I just want to speak our mind real quick. We don't, we don't, just because of this, we don't hate nobody at Valiant. I just want to get that out there, you know? Yeah. Um, but I, we just... I mean, we both believe that this is just not a good direct, just a good direction to take. Mm-hmm. take. And that, that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Um, I'm looking. By the way, it says quarter two and beyond of this year. Um, in real life events and access to cinematic universe and more. So Now, movie? this is just a roadmap. This isn't a roadmap of like you having to own the NFT and stuff, I think. But yes. um, everybody gets access to the cinematic universe. I think. Yeah. Uh, so, what benefit do you have with it? I mean, I don't know. Back, just like we just get to see the movies. We get we get the Harbinger movie, which is being made by Paramount, and um, mm-hmm. a Quantum and Woody show, which is being made by the Russo brothers. But um, they did put that on the back burner when COVID started. <laughs> uh, Dang it. We don't know. Well, right yeah. now, it seems like they're talking about Avengers stuff. So I don't know if they're doing that. I just wanted to call attention to this real quick, saying I think it is a serious issue, and um, I just I just wanted to call it out. Heck, heck. But you know, we don't again, we don't hate no one at Marvel, DC, Valiant, MS, You know, we don't hate nobody. Yeah, we just think it's a good idea. Besides Joss Whedon, um, besides Joss Whedon, <laughs> yes, sir. Joss Whedon had an NFT. Freaking Gwyneth Paltrow has NFTs now. No. No, it's, about her, it's about her candle. <laughs> Man, he's so. Uh, oh man. Um. All right. But there's a little. They get a little paragraph in here about the Valiant Universe. I'm just going to read this off. Um. If you want to know way more about it, go check out our Comic Burrito Extra Beef Ninjak versus the Valiant Universe episode. We had Spillman on as a guest star. Uh, guest star. It's not like a TV show. As a guest host, and um, 
he he explained the, the whole history of Valiant. And yes. we'll have more Valiant videos coming in the future. But mm. I do have two comics in here right now. Uh, gift, not, uh, borrow, let me borrowed um, by Spillman. Uh, he let mm-hmm. me borrow uh, these two comics. I'm going to read those. Yes. Uh, we got 15 minutes left of this episode, the time we got. I'm going to read this, and then we're going to head out of here. Yes. All right, uh, Valiant Entertainment is a leading character-based entertainment company that owns the largest independent superhero universe in comics. With more than 90 million issues sold in a library of over 2,000 characters, including Exo Manowar, Bloodshot, Harbinger, Shadow Man, Archer and Armstrong, and many more, Valiant is one of the most successful publishers in the history of the comic book medium. Today, the company's characters continue to be forged in publishing, licensing, film, video games, and beyond. Valiant consistently produces some of the most critically acclaimed comics in the industry and has received numerous industry awards and accolades, including a Diamond Jim Award for Comic Publisher of the Year. Valiant's multi-picture deal with Sony and Paramount Pictures began with Bloodshot, starring Vin Diesel, and continues with the upcoming Harbinger feature film. Um, uh, yeah, and that was a little rundown of that. And mm-hmm. that is, I guess, everything I got to talk about this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all I got to say too. So uh, no NFTs, please. <laughs> no. We are uh, we are against NFTs here at the Combo Burrito. Yes, very uh, much. Unless, unless, unless it's somebody, our own. <laughs> unless somebody wants to give me a million dollars of just sending me an animated picture of myself, and yeah, we full on support them. <laughs> we couldn't agree more with them. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Uh, yeah, a little rundown, real quick, before we um, start the outro. Um, tomorrow, uh, we're going to be filming another extra beef episode. We're reviewing Shazam. Oh, right. oh yeah! I completely forgot we agreed to do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, All right. uh, so, I've never so, seen it, so I'm excited to watch it. Uh, I saw it one time in the theaters, right, so I guess I'm it. taking tonight. <laughs> um, right. Also, we have we have a uh, gaming video. Mm-hmm. Yes, coming up that'll probably be dropping um, very late tonight. But uh, once I finish the broadcast, it's live on PlayStation. So yeah, um, but I don't know if anyone will see it, but. If you want to turn on your PlayStation 4 or 5, then, uh, yeah, come watch us and maybe yell at us. Well, they'll be seeing this after it's already out, probably, so. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Uh, well, we hope y'all enjoy Check it, it out. The video will be on YouTube. Um, it will yeah. be playing Injustice, Injust- Injustice Gods Among Us, Justice 2, and um, Marvel's, Capcom. Marvel's Capcom. Do want to point out, I made a comic book burrito gaming account. On my PlayStation, a new uh, user. All yes. of my data for my characters is they're all reset to one. So I'm like starting <laughs> fresh. So I'm sto- uh, I'm leveling up a certain character. Um, so, so, so you got to get on you. Yes, you got to forgive me. My character's not that strong. Uh, um, it sounds like excuses to me. But, okay, you know, I'll, play, I'll play your game. You know, I'll then, hey, hey, I'll go on my normal account and I'll use my level thirty flash and my level dude, beat, and my level I, sixteen green arrow. To, dude, I beat, dude, I beat you my level thirty Batman and my level sixteen Ninja Turtle. What are you talking about? Yeah, beat my flash with your level sixteen Ninja Turtle. Well, like, yeah, oh well, yeah, but we're doing even even levels, aren't we? I ain't gonna play this made up made up game you're playing. You're talking about. Oh come on. We'll see I'm if just, I win, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway. <laughs> Um, Quit the bull. Extra beef episode um, has dropped um, today. When you're seeing this, um, you can listen to our reheated talk about the Suicide Squad. Yes. Um, let's see uh, the gaming sh- things going on. Um, and yeah, that's uh, all I can think about. Mm-hmm. The extra beef episode that we're filming for Shazam will come out on this upcoming Wednesday, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, if I don't have any technical issues like I had on okay. Wednesday, let's hope not. All right. uh, or yesterday I had technical issues. Yeah, um, I was trying to post it and it wouldn't let me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it was really weird. Yeah, but uh, that's all I can think about. So, if you have any questions, comments, corrections, or concerns, you can contact me on Instagram at Darian H four four zero four. It's D A R I E N H. 4404 or on Facebook at the combo burrito colon official page. Very interactive over there. I just posted a thing uh, not even 12 minutes ago 
about and it says if you guys have listened to last week's episode i dished out some well-deserved hate to joss whedon and the whole drama between him and it seems everyone in hollywood here's the full vulture article about the undoing of joss whedon if you're interested and it is a very very long article about called the undoing of joss whedon is the official it is uh, worth reading you very much read uh, very much um recommend reading that but mm. always posting on there always interact if you talk to us or respond um yeah, immediately. Or we'll be like James Gunn, and we'll like your message, and they'll be it. And then, um, let's see, what else? Twitter. Um, you can contact us at the CB Burrito, capital C, capital B, capital B, and Burrito. Um, mm-hmm. Mainly, I just post some random stuff over there. Um, I posted a comic book panel earlier today that I'll let you go see for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a Patreon. Like I said, still working on it. <laughs> it's an arduous yes. process. Process of yeah, getting it is. Started. It's a very hard process. Um, but yeah, that's my yeah, stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, well, you can talk and type me at spider underscore landon on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You know, any any account. You know, uh, I will be on there, and I usually reply to messages very very fast. Fast. Um, but um, you can't follow our official Instagram page at the Comic Burrito. But me and Darren both recommend Twitter and um, and Facebook. It is, I mean, I consider it to be way better. There are better interactions and uh, better everything. Yeah, and that seems like a good point to wrap it up. Thank you yeah. all so much for tuning in this week. You can catch us. Uh, next week, same fat time. Oh, wrong, wrong podcast. Same um, fat time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, not even just to plug it, though. Go check out Fat Man Beyond with Kevin Smith and Mark Bernard. Uh, just to plug that. Yeah. Trying to make uh, connections. Yeah, I do here. like Fat Man Beyond. I actually recently. Did you? Uh, really okay. Like well, I'll ask you this in a minute. Come <laughs> on, Kevin. <laughs> yes. All right. But thank you all so much for listening this week. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. See y'all. See y'all. Excelsior. Excelsior.